All right, so by and large, go ahead and state your name, your government name, your whatever name for the people. OG Ron C. Ron Coleman. You can Google that. Everybody know that. I ain't changed my name. My name is world famous. World is famous. Two famous people name. No, it's three famous people, including myself, <laughs> shall I say. No, <laughs> and you are the creator of the legendary Chop Stars, the world famous Fuck Action Mixtapes, the co the co founder of Switch the House, the I mean, do I have to go with like a whole Hall of Fame resume or no? Damn oh, shit. That's what we just need to say. You just old ass nigga. Nah, we're not gonna. No, we can't say you're old. We we can say you are very well accomplished, and you why I say much like say DJ Screw deserve your own day in the city of Houston for all you've done. Man. So, at Brown, what time in your youth? Because we're talking a career that spans a good solid two decades now. Did you really say like, okay, I'm gonna pick up these turntables and I'm gonna really do something? I started when I was 14, so um, I, I was rapping, you know, in um in my little crew, you know what I'm saying, uh, I ain't gonna say no years, <laughs> we just do the math, but I was really rapping and we, you know, how I became a DJ was, we went to the, to the studio just to make our first demo, and, uh, shit, you know, we was just used to beatboxing and stuff, you know, and then, you know, beatboxing and rapping, so we thought, you know, the studio was where they made the music, we thought that's where the music was, right. So we just went to the studio just to lay down our vocal. We had it down, ready to go. Guys say, hey man, where, where the music? We like, we ain't had music. We thought this way you come to get the music. We thought y'all did the music. So he pulled out a drum machine. I remember it was a Lissus 16. It was a Lissus HR 16. Pulled it out, he showed me the snatter drum and I made a simple beat, boom, boom, I did. I still remember to this day. I never forget it. You know? That's how it went. That was just the whole song. Like, we rapped over it. And I just kind of really fell in love with the fact of just doing that. So before I became a DJ, I started producing beats. I used to produce beats. You know what I'm saying? Like, do you remember the first tape that really did, that really solidified you as the OG Marcy? Was it a fuck action tape? Was it a before the Catholic tape was the the first tape that solidified me and OG Ron C was Mad Hatter's album, yeah. Mr. Mad song, and it was a song on there where I said, "This a uh, Ron C." And I said, "Matter of fact, when you see me in the streets, you call me OG Ron C." And when I said that, yeah, that was it was simple playing because of your style of chopping and screwing music. It differs from screwing that it's a lot more rich. Where screws was just down bottom, making sure that every single sound that I heard yours just envelops every single thing. You get the snare gets hard, hard a little bit harder. The drums, the sonics behind it, it's it allows whenever you hear a fuck action tape, it's like say for example if you're doing a, a Maxwell of this woman's work, you gonna hear every single moan in the damn song because of you. Yeah, it's you know that's that's the reason why I created Chop Not Slop, and you are really the first one to you really are the first one to recognize that really for us, you know, being a journalist, uh, or, 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 <clears throat> but you're the first one to really notice that, uh, and it's like you would expect for somebody else, you know, to notice it, but you know, you are really you really hit it on the head because the Chop Not Slap. I created it because it all was a joke at first. It was a joke because I was listening to so many people's stuff. Well, I was listening to it, but like people around me would listen. They were like, "Man, you heard this, 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 that, this, this, and I'm, and you know, when they be playing it, or if I roll up on somebody and they playing and they not playing me, it was just so sloppy. And sloppy from a DJ standpoint is." You know, uh, everything's not on time. You know, it's like uh, we have a saying in the DJ world, uh, it's called railroading. And that means it's not, you know, uh, it's supposed to be smooth. Everything, when you're blending, it's supposed to be on a track. It's like being on a track. The train runs right up on the track. So when you're blending, you got to keep, that's what blending is about, keeping that train on that track. And when you start railroading, that means you getting off the track, and you know what I'm saying? You know how that is with we'll, we'll train, get off the track, shit, what happens? That throw it, right? right? So, I mean, it's, you know, in the DJ world, you know, railroading is, is like bad blending. 
and it was just like a lot of, you know, you chop wood right, people chopping on the right, on the wrong, you know what I'm saying? People want to chop up words instead of really music, you know what I'm saying? So with me creating, and this is, even with, listen, DJ Scoop is the one that made it cool, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. With this, by adding, you know, making it a gumbo, you know what I'm saying? Making the slow down music a gumbo, and that's why he called it Scoop Music, you know what I'm saying? Because it's his. He created that gumbo, which the gumbo was the rapping, the scratching, the bringing back the music. You know what I'm saying? That was that. You know what I'm saying? Because we, you know, he made that cool. You know what I'm saying? No, everybody know DJ Screw wasn't the first one to slow down a record. Right. We all know that. You right. know what I'm saying? And if you don't know that, now you know. But I'm just saying, you know, you got to kind of be careful with that because boys still touch you about that. You know what I'm saying? That's just the truth. You know what I'm saying? Nevertheless, though, now it's the truth, though. You know what I'm saying? It, it came out of Tampa, though. You know what I'm saying? Go research it, man. Slow motion, 70s, 70s, 80s. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you know, we just want to talk about it. But nevertheless, though, Screw made it cool, though, mm -hmm. and made it a culture. You know what I'm saying? So this is the reason why we upheld this leg, uphold the legacy of Screw. You know what I'm saying? Even with the Chop Stars. You know what I'm saying? It's like, but even when you listen to Screws. He's the first one to make it cool, right? Right. I came along, and what I consider, and I, this is really going to be touchy because everybody go get it. That's the first time I really <laughs> can say this, so I'll give y'all this exclusive right here. Now, I came along, and I cleaned it up with the style. That's why I call it chopped up, not slopped up. Now, because it's DJ Screw, we, we, now I'm not going to fix my mouth to say that was sloppy. You know what I'm saying? Because he's the one that created that. Right. But if you are a person that's trying to do what he do, and you're sloppy, that you're the person that I'm talking about. Like at least if you're gonna do what a man do, if you're gonna steal it, do it better than him. Clean it up. Don't do it worse than him. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like people came and did it worse than Screw. Right. You know what I'm saying? Screw had his moment because he'd be on, you know, he'd be on his influences at the time. He had a record might slip off the track. Listen to him. They wasn't, listen to the records. You know what I'm saying? Go listen to him. I ain't sick for the tell you nothing that's not out there. You can't go listen. <laughs> listen to the records. You know what I'm saying? They wasn't always like this. Right. They wasn't. So when I came, when I said I'm going to do this and I'm going to uphold that genre of music, I'm going to make it like this. So when you listen to my tapes, that's why there are no rooms for error in my CD. You know what I'm saying? Right. If you listen to them, every transition, everything that go into it, if I got to take your skits and put them into my shit in another place to make me transition into another song, you know what I'm saying? My shit flows like a screw tape for real. That's what I keep about us. You know what I'm saying? The chop like we try to really keep the essence of a screw tape, but in our own way. Right. And which is an enrichment way, like you said. We just came and made the dough richer. You know what I'm saying? We didn't say we invented the dough. We just say we came and made it richer and thinner and smoother and we smoothed it out. Yeah. And we laid it across the out. whole world, though. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. So, you, know, yeah. you have a personality on record that that voice is unmistakable. Like, you hear OG on a, on a fuck action tape, it's, oh, okay, we about to get it. All right. So, I mean, I try to just keep, you know, I, I try to keep it, like I said, I just try to keep it, it's all, it's all entertainment, that's the first thing that we always forget, first of all, this is the entertainment business, it's not the rap game, it's not the, the, the hip hop game, it's the entertainment business, it's not the rock game, it's not the R&B game, it's entertainment, it is. So first of all, you got to always remember, you got to entertain folks anyway. So we can talk about music, we can talk about what we don't like and whatever, you know, it's just like rip rap, you know what I'm saying? I mean, five years ago, I couldn't give him away, you know what I'm saying? So now it's like, now I can't stop my phone from calling, you know what I'm saying? Right, and his album drops next week. Right, and we're about to go number one. Yeah. I do have a question, has any, has any major label come calling trying to you know, make y'all a boutique label underneath um, their wing? Like say Universal or Interscope that you can actually... Nah, I ain't going to even lie, man. 
Them motherfuckers know I be cursing their ass out, so they probably really don't even want. They always probably hear me saying fuck the labels and shit, so they they, uh, they probably just really scared. And they probably just really scared because they know shit, you know, man, we did get money, shit, yeah, damn, I mean, you know, it's gonna be more, it's gonna boil down to more than money now, especially with a person like me that's been around a long time. Like, you just can't come give me no $35,000. No, definitely. Especially man, considering you that. Come give me a whole, you gotta give me some news. Now I'm probably gonna start putting out records, man, because what we wanna do is, we don't, I don't wanna, because we got a platform. You know what I'm saying? We don't really wanna be considered as a label. We wanna be considered as a platform because when you have a platform, it's already done, right? Right. We already, we already got a fan base. You know what I'm saying? So what we really wanna do is just take artists and introduce them to that platform. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If you got that, if you got fans here or not, we can use our platform to, to create a, uh, something for you, a buzz, or create a bigger buzz for you. You know what I'm saying? Because we, our platform is dedicated fucking to it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like we know for sure that we got a platform of at the minimum ten thousand folks for sure. You know what I'm saying? We that know that. Willing to actually buy the music. Yes, that's willing to actually buy the music. You know what I'm saying? We know we got that. So I mean, so I mean, so we just we just gonna take these artists. Put them on our platform and just you know use the platform to let them you know if they want to go out and get deals you know that's cool if they don't you know what I'm saying we just gonna keep on putting our records and keep doing what we've been doing around Texas period you know what I'm saying since rapper like Lil J is king of that you know what I'm saying we gonna put our record regardless man you know what I'm saying we just gonna keep putting out the record let them sell let them do what they do and just keep putting our music man and live yeah. so I'm curious what what what. Outside of being a general ambassador for the city, what is your role this weekend with Houston Appreciation Week? Um, and I, you know, I have the the proclamation was, man, fuck it, man. You got to brush off the modesty sometime. That's what uh, we need you to do. Yeah, you know, you I, said that. I got the proclamation done. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I have the proclamation in my phone before it got framed. No, <laughs> you know, but now I just, I just thought, you know, because I knew everybody. It's like everybody's waiting to see what Drake gonna do for them. You know what I'm saying? Drake done a lot for us and the Chop Stars for our brand. You know what I'm saying? By just saying Chop Stars and just by being down and letting us, you know, by him saying, by him making me OVO, OG Ron You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's like, what do you get a person like that when he's already had everything? Like, it's nothing I could buy him. You the biggest star in the world, man. It's so much shit you gotta go through to make shit happen with that. Man, it just, man, I had to end up telling him. You know what I'm saying? Telling Drake himself. Man, I got you the proclamation, man. You got to just come, because I wanted it to be a surprise. You know what I'm saying? So, because it was actually supposed to be on that Tuesday, but we just decided to do it at the Astros game. So, you know, that was real cool. So, I mean, that that that's felt good just to get him that proclamation, man. And he know that I got it, you know, that, that I done it. That you know I was responsible for that. But you know, like I said, I do nothing. Everything's done through God anyway.